what did you want to work on today? I don't know if you've told me what you're working on. Well, it's a story that a lot of people seem to like, and it kind of goes along with my life. It's called Don't Spill the Tea. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah, when, and you can read it, whatever. I mean, it's weird on video. I always tell people you're not performing it. You know, read it, do whatever. It doesn't matter because uh, we're just – usually we look at the words of the structure first and then maybe a little bit of delivery tips, but it's, it's not the same as being in front of a group of people, so I get it. Okay. Well, I don't have it written out in front of me because I like to pull it out of my head. I, okay. I'm weird. No, 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 no. That's right. That's fine. So whenever you're ready, just go ahead and start, and I'll take notes, and then when you're done, I'll, uh, I'll give you my feedback. Okay, sounds great. Okay. I have a very embarrassing trait. I am coordination challenged. It's like my brain and my body are on two different pages all the time. If you were to look at a relay race, my body would be the runner in the front and my brain would be the one in the back of the talk going, hey, wait on me, wait on me. <laughs> well, my family and friends, they all know this. And I was at one of my cousin's house for a gathering of a family. And she handed me these two full glasses of tea. And she said, well, do you care to take these downstairs to my guest in the den? And I thought, now I know she knows who I, how I am. She's known me my whole life. Is she that desperate for help? And I thought, you know, maybe she actually believes in me. She thinks I can do it. And I thought, if I can carry these tea, this tea down the steps, well, then everybody will think I can walk and carry at the same time. So I walk up the steps, and I've got my glasses of tea in my hand. And I look down them, and I thought, I can do this. I can do this. So I took the first step, and I stopped. I thought, okay, I'm good, I'm good. I took the second step and I stopped and I thought, I can do this. This is a new start for me, I can do this. I took the next step down and I felt my left foot catch behind my right angle. The last thing I remember is lunging forward. The rest of the foot is a blur. Some steps, I remember I skipped completely over. My shoelace didn't even touch them. And there were some steps that my feet just touched the edge long enough to back off. The biggest thing in my mind that I remember were the loud thump, thump, thumps as I bounced from wall to wall going down the steps. Then I saw the floor coming up and I thought, oh man, you know, I was relieved and scared at the same time. I was relieved to get this trip over with, but I was scared. Am I going to break something in me? or am I going to break something in her basement? I completely sailed over the last two steps. And when my feet touched the ground, I went straight down to my knees. So I slid across the floor with all my energy, with the two glasses of tea in the air. And I came to a stop behind my cousin's chair. So there I sit on my knees with the glasses of tea up in the air. And I thought, oh man, I just want to stay hidden behind this chair. I don't want to get up. You know, but the awesome thing was I hadn't spilled a drop of tea. And the only thing really hurt was my ego. And while I was sitting there delaying the inevitable of getting up, my piano teacher's voice rang through my head. See, I've always been nervous at piano recital. And this time I was 14 years old and I had my first complicated piece, the ballet. And she told me, she said, listen, everybody makes mistakes. It is no big deal. Whatever happens, you don't panic and you don't ever stop playing. You continue on. You try the best you can to cover it up and deal with it. She said, chances are nobody's gonna know you made that mistake. Well, I knew people in the house either heard me or saw me fall down the steps. But I thought, you know, I'm going to go on. I'm going to get up with my head, held, my head held high. And I did. I got up with my two full glasses of tea. I handed one out to my cousin, who was still in a state of shock. His mouth was, oh. I handed the, uh, the other glass to somebody else. I don't remember who the other person was now, but I remember my husband was bent over in his chair just laughing. 
And everybody around me started laughing, but you know what? I didn't care because I accomplished a feat they could not do. How many people can fall down a flight of stairs and not spill a drop of tea? But none of them could do that. What I really needed was somebody to hold up a scorecard. Now at home, Kelly, I mean at work, I have a 10 on a scorecard I'm gonna hold up. I couldn't find it, I didn't bring it back. So that, actually that's gonna be in my book that's gonna be released soon. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so that's, you're at the end of it, right? Right. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. I love it. Let me write one more note to myself. Hold on, okay? Okay. I don't, I'm catching up. Okay. Hold on, this is great stuff. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome story. You are a great storyteller, Brooke. I'm not kidding, you're just really good. Um, and you have a good grasp. I I'm watching too, your improvement in the story. You know, the more you work on this and the, you know, you come to camp a couple of times, you know, I'm, I'm also watching you uh, make the changes I say to make and it's having an impact on your storytelling and and I love that I love that um, at some point well now um, I will be giving you I think some lines that you're really gonna want to use and remember and therefore your process of I'm just gonna tell the story if you're in front of a group you might have to change the process a little bit and at least if you don't go all the way to scripting the story all the way out you at least go to a little note card or a piece of paper on a music stand that has some of these good lines written down so that you can at least memorize those because they're going to be powerful, especially when you hear where I'm thinking um, the, the, the little uh, tiny things that I would help you add. Structurally, this is great. Most people, the story, it's structural. In these case, we're just putting on a little bit of, um, you know, just little accessories onto it that will make it even more powerful because it is really well structured. Okay, th these are the things that I would do, and you're going to need to go take the recording back probably and play it later to unpack it, process, think about it, and figure out, since you're a writer, I won't have to give you too many of the actual words. You can just find those for yourself. Um, in the beginning, when you open it up, um, instead of saying, I have a certain trait, I would like if you would say, I have a certain quirk. Oh, that is much better. Yeah, use that word instead, and here's another reason why. I want to set you, I want to set up the pain in your character more so in the beginning of the story, okay? okay. So saying it's a trait makes it sound like you're better off with it. Whereas when, in order for me to help you set up this character and this pain in the beginning of the story and make the conflict more pronounced, um, I, um, th there's a strategic reason I want you to use the word quirk. It also just sounds, you know, whatever. So I would love for you to say it's your quirk. I have this quirk. Okay, I'm working anyway. Good. Yeah, yeah. And you could even, if you're there to give a whole speech, you could say, hey, we all got quirks. Let's face it. What are some of yours? You know, right. you could even open it up and have people share. I did that once with a, at a workshop and had a ball where people are like, I'm a nurse. I'm scared of cotton balls. You know, I line up my M&Ms by color. You know, uh, uh, you could even have some fun if you have more time. So I would say I have this trait um, of, of, you know, I, I've got something quirky about me. I'm going to share mine today, or I have this quirk. Um, and if you don't open it up to the audience, then get right to it. You know, let's just begin by, I got a confession. I have, I have a quirk. Many, but the one I want to share with you today is that I can be somewhat coordination challenged. And then I want you to say, yeah, I'm a klutz. Because Courtney... Yeah, coordination challenged. I love the word, and it's funny. Don't take it out. I want you to say, I'm sort of, I am a klutz. And I want you to give me two or three examples of what a klutz you are. I trip over things that aren't there is, is one you could use. I'm such a klutz, I'll fall getting out of bed. You know, um, um, you know, I've never met a step I didn't miss. You know, I want you to set up a few examples that paint the picture of what a clutch you are. 
Well, that was also true, Kelly. So you're good. I know, I know, and 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 I don't mean I know I'm good. I mean it work. It it works. It's 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 it fits. And then I want you to say. Uh, then I love the line about the brain weight up. I love that. So whenever I'm, whatever you said, blah, 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 my bl brain's usually back behind me going, wait, wait, I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold up. Don't get ahead of me. You know, have a little fun with that okay. moment where you're talking about the brain. Now here, Brooke, I want you to tell me how it makes you feel. Remember when we said in our, at camp in our formula that I want to know how it, that we want emotion. So you're telling me a quirk, but you're not really connecting it to the emotion. So I, and I want to go to kind of a painful one because of the story that, that you you're telling me and where I know we can go with it. So I want you to say, so yeah, in a room full of polished people, I often feel like the one that never quite fits. Or I always, I spend most of my time feeling bad about myself or something. I want you to go into what your real emotions are. How does it make you feel, Brooke, to always be the klutzy one? Embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. And so I want you to tell me that in that part of the story. And I don't want you to tell me, in a, oh, so I feel, I mean, I want it to be a little bit real. I want you to say, so yeah, I spend most of my life feeling embarrassed. And I want you to just, you know, so that we get it. And you're letting us into this, this feeling that's attached. Um, now, the next scene is, um, um, so, so let's, let's uh, we, oh, so I've spent most of my life feeling embarrassed. Uh, for example, when I was invited to my friend such and such as whatever. Now, but Brooke, I need to, I, it wasn't clear to me. What kind of event are you at with this tea? It was just a gathering of friends. Family. Okay, so I say I was at a party, and it was one of your friends, right? It's actually a relative. Okay, or, or, or cousin. You know, I was at my cousin's birthday party. Let's just give it a kind of, you know, we want to just get quick, quick, you know, or not even, birth, you know, but I was at my cousin's birthday party. And, okay, now, this person having the event, I'd love for you to describe her a tiny bit. So if it's your cousin and you don't feel comfortable and you want to make it a fake character or my friend Jean or something like that, but I want you to give in order to really play up the conflict of the story. What I'm trying to set up is that you're at, a, at an event where it matters what you look like. You know, you're already feeling embarrassed and less than. And so now you're going to my, I would say something like, and you can create your own, but um, so speaking of embarrassment, I'll give you an example. Just recently when I was at my friend Jean's um, um, uh, uh, dining with friends dinner party or something like that. And Jean is one of, Jean is everything I'm not. You know, her house is immaculate. You know, her outfit doesn't have any food stains on it. You know, she looks like she just walked out of a magazine. And I'm like, you know, so you can imagine I'm already feeling like the bull in the china shop. And, and, and yeah, and you can word it like you want to word it, but I'm trying to show you what I want you to do with the story. Something, you know, trying to kind of be you, but sort of maybe be me, whatever. You know, so I'm already feeling like the bull in the china shop already out of place. But I'm from the South, so we help out. So I said, Jean, what can I do? You know, what can I do to help? She says, Brooke, you can carry the tea. Great. The klutz, she's given me the job of carrying a silver tray. Give it a silver tray. That'd be cute. A silver tray of iced tea. Or maybe not. Maybe you're not, you know, whatever. Down a flight of stairs to the party. Um, in case you can't tell, can you imagine how this story is going to go? That's good. See, yeah, isn't that? So you could kind of, that's what I want to set up because we're all like, oh, and it plays more into the conflict. And we've brought in this sense of, it's not just she asked you to carry tea, but it's, a, I already am embarrassed. I already feel like a klutz. I'm at this party. It's not just any day. I always say raise the stakes of the story. It's not just any day. You know, this isn't Jean's house. These are all, and, and have a moment when you're talking about standing at the top of that stairs. You know, a million things are going. I know you're thinking, just carry the tea for gosh sakes. But I'm thinking of, you know, I, I've worn my, I, I thought this outfit would look good. You know, all my, my friends are sitting down there. You know, I want to impress these people, you know, whatever, whatever can kind of go through your mind. And, and then you could say, that was the last thing I remember. And the last time I had firm footing 
on those stairs. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, and then so then you're ta you, you, you're you're just kind of dragging it out. I love how you said that's the last thing I remember was hitting that first stair. And I loved how you just, I would love for you to say this line before you describe going down the stairs. I would love for you to say, and at that moment, let's just say time began to run in slow motion. I should have thought that. That's good. I yeah, it's not, it doesn't matter. It's easy for somebody else to look outside and see. So then you say, goes in slow motion. And now you talk about going down the stairs. I love every bit. The foot hit. It was perfect, which is which I really commend you on because not a lot of people can take a scene like that and really describe it in a way. And your audience will be laughing and you'll be milking it. Once you've told this, you know, story 20 times, you're going to you're going to have added funny things on the stairs and people laughing and, and add a line about being a pinball. Because when you say thumping and bouncing against the wall, I'm envisioning like a pinball machine, you know, a, a tacky pinball machine in a floral sundress. I mean, maybe describe at the top of the stairs what you're wearing, because maybe that could add to the humor. And there's where I think it's no big deal if you make it up, like you're in a floral sundress. It's just funnier if you're in a dress and flip flops or, or whatever could make it really, really funny if you're talking about it. So, um, I love that going down the stairs. When you said the floor came to greet me, I love that. And why don't you say something like, and like your typical Southern hostess, the floor came up to greet me. That's good. Wouldn't that be cute? Something like that. And, 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 and so you're, you're, you, and I love that you're saying, uh, the floor came up to greet me. Now have that thought. You said it already. You said, I loved how you said, it's going to hurt me or I'm going to hurt the basement. I love that. When you deliver the story, make sure you really pause and milk that line and wait for them to laugh because it's hysterical. So um, you, you slid into, maybe you could even say like a baseball player coming into third base or whatever. I slid right into that party and then pause and everybody will probably be laughing in, in your audience and pause and say, with that silver tray of tea still up in the air. And then the, you pause and then you go, I did not spill one drop. And give them all a minute to, to be excited about that. And then I want you to go to the scene of now I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, you know, w with my Spanx showing, that would be funny if you've got a floral, flor a floral sundress with my Spanx making an appearance. Now my Spanx have joined the party. And, and in this moment, time stops. And I'm sitting there just, to, just like a kid who's fallen in the middle of the cafeteria in middle school. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, there you are again. I'm, my face is red. I'm sitting there in the middle of all my friends. My husband can't breathe. He's laughing so hard. And I'm having this moment. And in this moment, I'm realizing. No, no, I, I can't decide, Brooke, if I want you to say in this moment, I'm realizing I have a choice. No, I think in this moment, suddenly out of the blue, I remembered sitting in my piano in, in a piano recital with my, I want to see the teacher. I want to know her name and one detail about her, you know, miss, miss Gladys, miss Gladys and the glasses that always, you know, dangled at the tip of her nose or whatever. And maybe I want to go you to go, not just to a piano lesson, but a time when you messed up in a recital and, and miss Gladys said, Brooke, whatever you do, don't panic and don't and never stop playing or don't stop playing. So, uh, so go back to that moment when you messed up in your P in that moment, suddenly I shot back to another moment 25 years ago, 30 years ago when I was sitting in a, when, when I had, when I had bombed a piano recital and I remember my piano teacher's words whispering in my ear, Miss Gladys with the gray hair and the little glasses that dangled. And she said, Brooke, don't panic. Smile and just keep 
playing. And in that moment, I knew I had a choice. I knew I could be embarrassed and be ashamed and to embrace the quirk that I am. Or wait, not say that. That sounds too positive. I knew I could be ashamed and I could be embarrassed. Or I could do what Miss Gladys says. Don't panic and just keep playing. And that day I decided that's exactly what I would do. And I stood up at that party and instead of, and that day, instead of taking, uh, that day, instead of cringing away in shame, that day I stood up and accepted my applause. And the room, and the room cheered. And then I want you to say something and don't forget our stories have a lesson, Brooke, that we pull out at the end. And that day I learned an important lesson as they cheered around me. That day I realized that the difference between shame and cheer isn't them. It's you and the choice you make. That is so much better. That is good. That and then I want you to... And then I want you to say this and the, and the choice you make. And so today I stand in front of you knowing that somebody here is standing at the top of that flight of stairs. Somebody here is seeing the floor rushing up to greet them. Somebody here is or will soon be standing in a moment where you have a choice where what happens in this moment is not up to them. It's up to you. And when you hit that moment, when you're splayed out at the bottom of the stairs with your spank showing, I hope that you will remember the words of me and Miss Gladys. Don't panic. Smile. And just keep playing. Oh, that's good. And they will, I'm telling you what, Brooke, that'll, you, it, it goes at the end of a keynote. Or even if you only had 10 minutes, if somebody said, Brooke, we can only give you 15 minutes, then you go tell that story. Add a few jokes at the front end. You tell that story. You, bring, you put it on video. You get over your worry about being on video. In fact, I'm going to, yeah, you get over your worry of being on video and you go film that you telling that story and you put it on your website and I believe people will book you just from having seen that story. Really? Yeah, you put it on your website, you put it on your Facebook page, you even start, without even worried about how to get booked as a speaker, you just start putting those stories like this on YouTube and you just let it go and let the world, you just start feeding your world with your beautiful stories. And I think it's just gonna happen naturally okay. that they're gonna want more. They're gonna want them in books, they're gonna want them, you know, they're gonna say, oh my gosh, I want her to come tell her stories to us. It's really a beautiful, and I hope you um, really own it and acknowledge that you were just a couple of lines away from it being perfect. I mean, it, it's, it's a, uh, you're a very good writer and, and you're really putting it together well. Um, I'm jealous. I wish that was my story uh, because that's a, that's a great premise for a story. I'm going to stop the recording right now. Okay.